chemist, a mountain climber, the executive director of the Green Science Policy Institute in Berkeley, California, and honored to be a board member for the Plastic Pollution Coalition. And I want to tell you about yet another problem about plastic. Something that's not so well known is extremely threatening to our health and well-being, and that is the toxic flame retardants used in plastic and foam in our furniture, our electronics, and other common everyday products. But the good news is that this is a problem that we can solve. So let me ask you, how many of you believe if a chemical is in your toothpaste or your shampoo, someone is making sure that that chemical, that there are no cancer-causing or hazardous chemicals in those products. How many think somebody's paying attention? <laughs> Not very many people here, knowledgeable audience. And how many think that there can be chemicals in everyday products that are known to cause serious harm and no one has the authority to do anything about it? You are very knowledgeable and you're right. <laughs> the sad fact is in America, foods, drugs, and pesticides are regulated before they go into products. And for all other chemicals, there's no regulation. So we can know that there's serious problems with a chemical, and they can end up in our consumer products. So I'm a chemist. I study molecules called organohalogens. Organo means carbon. Halogens are bromine, fluorine, chlorine, iodine. The bond between carbon and a halogen is a very, very strong bond, very long-lived. So organohalogens go into our bodies, they stay for weeks, months, years, the rest of our lives, and they can cause health problems. An example of an organohalogen oops, is um, this ad from the 50s of uh, DDT wallpaper. The pesticide DDT is an organohalogen. A number of the pesticides like DDT that were banned in the 80s. Um, this mother thinks she's doing a good deed for her daughter by putting DDT wallpaper in the nursery, protecting her from mosquitoes. But what she doesn't know is a new research result from UC Berkeley that young girls exposed to DDT at high levels have a five times greater risk of breast cancer. These girls were exposed in the 50s and 60s, and now, decades later, we have this research result. In the same chemical family as DDT and the organohalogen pesticides are the organohalogen flame retardants. They're chemical cousins. In some cases, they're the same thing. Pesticides and flame retardants are the same molecules. So I first got interested in flame retardants back in the 70s. I heard about a flame retardant called brominated tris that was being used in all kids' pajamas in those days. Five to 10% of the weight of the pajamas was this organohalogen flame retardant. We tested it. We found it was a mutagen. It changed the DNA of living organisms, was likely to cause cancer. We found a child who'd never worn tris pajamas, which wasn't so easy, put her in Tris pajamas. The next morning, there were Tris breakdown products in her urine. That means that chemicals go into our bodies from our clothing just as though we were eating them, but there's no regulation from the government. So being scientists, we wrote a paper in Science, a lead article. We called for to stop the use of Tris in kids' pajamas. And that was January 1977. Three months later, the Consumer Product Safety Commission banned Tris. <laughs> so if any of you were kids in the 70s, maybe some of you were, you only wore Tris for a year or two. <laughs> Sounds like a good deal. So when brominated Tris got banned, what do you think the substitute was? We always like to keep our industrial processes similar. The substitute was chlorinated Tris. So we did more studies. Chlorinated Tris was a mutagen. We wrote another paper. It was also removed from kids' pajamas. But the sad news is today, chlorinated Tris is back. 
It's in our furniture foam. It's in baby products at levels up to 10% of the weight of foam in our furniture and baby products. And why is that? It's because of a unique California furniture flammability standard called Technical Bulletin 117. And I ask you to remember that when you go home, look under your chair, pick up the center cushion of your couch, and you may see a notice like the one on the slide that your couch or your chair compli complies with Technical Bulletin 117. And that means it's very likely to be treated with an organohalogen flame retardant. So what are the health problems with these chemicals? Well, there's a whole industry of scientists studying these chemicals. Hundreds of scientists get together at meetings, present peer-reviewed papers, and what they have found in animal studies is these chemicals are endocrine disruptors. They cause scrambling of brain development, hyperactivity, neurological impairments. They're reproductive toxins in both males and females. So males have lower sperm counts. Females have lower ovarian follicle, follicles. Uh, it takes longer to become pregnant. They impact thyroid levels, and they cause cancer. This is in many, many hundreds of animal studies. And now, sadly enough, in the last couple years, we're finding human studies with the same result. And it's pretty unusual to find human health results on chemicals that aren't industrial. We are exposed to so many chemicals, we move around a lot, that usually it's just industrial chemicals like asbestos where we can find health results. But because these flame retardants were used at our furniture since the standard was passed in the 70s, and used at levels of 5% of the weight of the foam, so we can have pounds of these organohalogen uh, flame retardants in our homes. We are finding in humans, not surprisingly, very similar results as in animals. So a new study at UC Berkeley showed that women with higher levels take twice as long to become pregnant. Uh, a Columbia University study showed that infants at birth having higher levels have four to six less IQ points at age four. So, um, so how do the chemicals get into us? They're semi-volatile. They migrate out of products. They're heavy. They drop into dust. We um, have dust on our hands, maybe eat a french fry. They go into our bodies, and they stay. They're lipophilic, fat-loving. So they stay in our fat. They stay in breast milk. Sadly enough, a number of studies show that children have three to four times the level of their mothers because they get the same level as their mother through the placenta. They get a second dose from breast milk. Um, American mother's breast milk has record levels of flame retardants. And then toddlers with hand-to-mouth behavior get more flame retardants in their bodies. And this is at the time of reproductive and brain development, a time where you do not want exposure to such chemicals. The highest levels are in cats because they're in the dust, they lick their fur, they have levels 100 to 1,000 times higher than humans. So that's my cat Midnight, and Midnight went from being a 15-pound cat to a 5-pound cat. The vet diagnosed hyperthyroid disease, said that disease had never existed, and there was now a mysterious epidemic of hyperthyroid disease. He thought it was a chemical. And I thought, that's interesting. Penta, that flame retardant that we have Use. By the way, Penta was used, 98% of the use was in uh, mostly California and in North America, other places where furniture manufacturers followed the California standard. I thought, I wonder if it could be Penta, because Penta causes thyroid problems in mice, rats, kestrels, frogs, and uh, Penta workers have higher incidences of thyroid problems. So. Um, we sent a sample of our house dust and Midnight's blood to a veterinary epidemiologist in Illinois. The result came back that our house dust and Midnight's blood were the highest level they'd ever measured in this toxic flame retardant. And that's because it was an Illinois study and we lived in California. So I checked my furniture and everything in my house was 5% Penta. So that's my couch. <laughs> and you see it went into the dumpster. But where is a way? There are studies that show Penta leaches out of uh, landfills, and it, dust with Penta ends up in sewage treatment plants. 
and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration did a study looking for penta around our coast and found that everywhere there were cities, there were high levels of penta in sediments and bivalves, which is the bottom of the marine food chain. So it builds up from the sediments to the bivalves to the small fish, the large fish, it bioaccumulates. So when it comes to chemicals like penta, we're one world. There are high levels at the North Pole and the South Pole because of the currents. When you look in animals, you see it in Tasmanian devils near the South Pole, polar bears near the North Pole. 98% of this chemical was used in North America primarily to meet our California furniture flammability standard. Uh, killer whales have very high levels. The highest levels ever recorded are marine mammals off the coast of California. A recent paper on killer whales was entitled Flame Retardant Killer Whales because their levels are so high. Killer whales do not need flame retardants. So is there a fire safety benefit? And the answer is no. Can you believe that? So the graph on the left, if you compare some foam in blue without a flame retardant and the one with red on the right with a flame retardant, it takes three more seconds. The flame retardant makes your foam burn three seconds more slowly. You get three more seconds. But then there's fire toxicity. When you compare with and without flame retardants, you get twice as much smoke six times as much carbon monoxide, and 90 times as much soot. And what do you think kills you in a fire? You're in a hotel room, you smell smoke, you open the door, there's soot, smoke, you close the door, you die. The carbon monoxide gets you. So this is what we get for putting Penta in our furniture. So we don't want this, right? Let's change the law. So for four years, I have supported, our, our group, Green Science Policy Institute, has supported legislation in Sacramento for a flammability standard that would provide more fire safety, a flammability standard for fabric, because what burns first? Fabric, that would not use toxic chemicals. And the result was a marketing campaign from the chemical industry. Maybe some of you remember full page ads in the papers, radio, TV, glossy mailers, uh, all paid for by a front group called Californians for Fire Safety, who are the three companies that manufacture the chemicals. Now, this might sound a little discouraging, but I don't seem discouraged, because we've actually had many, many successes. It's only three companies. They can change their business model, move to greener chemicals, use biomimicry, find other kinds of flame retardants. Um, some of our successes is there was going to be a similar flammability standard for pillows, mattress covers, those memory foams we all love. All of those were going to have to resist a candle flame. But when we brought good science into the decision pro process at the last minute, the standard was suspended. So your pillows, your memory foams, they're all safe. Yeah. Another important area uh, is green building. You may not realize this, but the... The materials that often make green buildings energy efficient are plastic insulations that are treated with some of the most toxic flame retardants. And when, but when green builders know about this, they can make other choices. Um, a, a friend in Berkeley, an architect, had designed the, the, supposedly the greenest um, visitor center ever in Yosemite Valley. It was going to be covered in polystyrene, which is a plastic insulation with one of the worst flame retardants. He heard about the problem, and instead he substituted mineral wool, which is slag wool with basaltic rock, for the plastic polystyrene. And that's our new visitor center in Yosemite. Um, so now, at Ted, you're supposed to hear something new. I'm going to share with you something that nobody knows. It's the result of a new study we've done. We've looked at 100 baby products. And the bad news is that 80 of them have toxic flame retardants. The nursing pillow with the organic cotton cover is 10% chlorinated tris. A third of these products have chlorinated tris in them. But with this information, parents can make different choices. Our paper is going to be peer reviewed. It's going to come out in a few months. And we hope this will reach parents just the way the children's pajama information reach parents. They'll demand safer products. And I actually feel optimistic that children can be safe both in their pajamas and sitting on couches. <laughs> so I think the toxic chemical problem is solvable. 
with information, consumers can make better choices, builders and architects can make better choices. We can support uh, new regulations that will give us more fire safety without toxicity. And very important, right now in uh, DC, we have legislation for chemical reform to give our government the authority to protect us, not only from toxic flame retardants in plastics, but from a whole range of toxic chemicals that are adversely impacting our health. So I think this is a moment that we can succeed and we can have a healthier world. Thank you.